While Donald Trump was president, Democrats in this country conducted themselves like nothing I have ever seen before in my life. Impeachment was a huge deal before Donald Trump took over as president. They then impeached him twice over nothing. He was completely kneecapped from within his own State Department, his own military. The media went all in, even in ways we'd never seen before. They decided that there were no more rules, that it was just blind rage at any cost. Okay, what are we going to do to make sure they don't do that again? Because I promise you this, cross my heart and hope to die, I promise you these people are not going to stop once Donald Trump is gone. It had nothing to do with Trump. This is who they are now. We have to make sure they know the pain will come back the other way. If they don't know that, they'll never stop. So why impeach Mayorkas? Because it's embarrassing. It's an election year. It's humiliating. If you impeach Mayorkas, he then has to go through a trial in the Senate to decide whether or not he can be removed. He, of course, won't be removed because Democrats have a majority but he's going to sit in front of these seasoned lawyers in the Senate and be interrogated about things under oath. It's devastating. It's humiliating for Joe Biden. It's humiliating for Mayorkas. We have to impeach Mayorkas because it will hurt. And saying things that way makes so many people on the right uncomfortable. I am sorry to be the bearer of bad news. You cannot win. We can never take this country back without them feeling pain. There's no polite way to do this. We have to impeach them. Frankly, Joe Biden should have been impeached with the very first vote after the GOP took back the House of Representatives. And frankly, he should have been impeached every few months. Jesse, that's ridiculous. Yes, it's ridiculous. It's over the top. I hate that we're here, but we're here. So why did this impeachment vote fail yesterday? Well, the low T GOP. All it took was a few defectors. Now, understand, there are different reasons people defect, and you're never going to know specifically. No one's going to confess on camera why they defected. But let's, let's talk about some things, some theories that I have. And no, I don't feel bad bringing this up at all. Blackmail in politics, it's not just something you watch on that series on Netflix. It's the entire history of politics, not just in America, the history of the world. I believe, and I have believed for some time, that Congressman Ken Buck, he's one of the ones who voted against impeachment yesterday, I believe he is, this is a total theory, I don't have any evidence backing this up, I believe he's been compromised in some way. What way? I, I don't know. I don't, I don't have any idea. I don't know what it may be. Cheats on his taxes, I, I, I don't know. Someone got some bad pictures of him somewhere, I don't know. But I've thought this ever since I saw him interrogate Christopher Wray. And before I play that for you, I want, you, I want to remind you of something before I play you this clip. Congress sits over top of the FBI. The FBI is underneath Congress. Congress has oversight authority over the FBI. So when the director of the FBI has to come sit in front of Congress and answer some very difficult questions about SWAT teams arresting pro-lifers, about all the evil things the FBI has done, sending informants into your church. When the FBI director has to come answer questions, he is most definitely supposed to be the underling, nervous, scared. I want you to watch this little exchange between Ken Buck and Christopher Ray. Why do I think Chris, why do I think Ken Buck is compromised? After you watch this video clip, or as you watch this video clip, ask yourself, who looks like the subservient one here? I want to thank you for leading an agency, as you mentioned in your opening statement, that protects Americans from foreign terrorists, that uh, an agency that protects Americans from fries from China uh, and Russia, uh, and cybercrime, and public corruption, and organized crime, and drug cartels, and human traffickers, and white-collar criminals. And I want to thank you and the FBI for protecting law-abiding Americans from the evil that exists all around us. And frankly, I am not in favor of defunding the FBI, nor am I in favor of splitting up the FBI, nor am I in favor of using the home and rule for the FBI director. That's Ken Buck. He was a member, is a member of the Freedom Caucus. 
True, but we've had him on this show years ago. He'll obviously never be back. I don't think he would accept even if we asked. Now, licking the boots of the FBI director. I believe he's compromised, and that's how things work in Washington, D.C. And it also, you know, they trade favors. I owe Heritage Foundation all the credit in the world for this one. Mike Gallagher is another one of these losers who voted no on impeachment. Mike Gallagher just, uh, he sent a letter two weeks ago to Alejandro Mayorkas asking for, and I quote, help with textile imports. Mayorkas, in turn, helps Gallagher. Mayorkas comes up for impeachment. He very clearly deserves to be impeached. Gallagher gets up and says, no, 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 I can't do it, I can't do it. And look, some of it's just no guts. And this is what drives me crazy about conservatism, what conservatism has been for most of my life. What conservatism has been for most of my life, this is why I'm an anti-communist. I'm not a Republican. I don't call myself a conservative. Conservatism for all my life has been people in power handing us a list of reasons why they can't do anything to fight back, why they won't fight back against the communists. Almost always, almost always, they will reference the Constitution or the founders, not as, not as the wonderful document that limited the size of government. It's always handed to us as, as a big universal get out of jail free card excuse by these GOPers for why they can't help us out. Tom McClintock voted against impeachment yesterday. <laughs> Listen to Tom McClintock with Mike Slater. Mayorkas is guilty of maladministration, neglect of duties, malfeasance in office, but these are not impeachable offenses. And we know that because the American founders specifically rejected them at the Constitutional Convention. And the reason was they didn't want impeachment twisted into a weapon for political grievances. Well, then the next time the Democrats have the majority, I think we can expect this definition to be turned against the conservatives on the Supreme Court and any future Republican administration. And there will be nobody there to stop them because Republicans have then signed off on this new and unconstitutional definition of impeachment. There's already a new definition of impeachment. They already did impeachment twice, completely ridiculous. It doesn't matter what you say now, you worthless sissy loser. They are going to use impeachment from now to the end of time. They made that choice. You didn't. You don't want to fight back because you don't have any balls. And it makes me freaking sick. I am so sick of being handed the Constitution as a reason why you won't do anything, you dorks. I will say this, though, as we finish this up on, great, on better news. You remember when I said this about James Lankford? It's important that Senator Lankford have his entire professional life destroyed. You know why it's important? It's not just because of the unending amounts of malice I have in my heart towards cowardice like that. It's important that the other GOP senators see Langford destroyed. They must look at what happens when you betray us like this, and they must be afraid of us. So Oklahoma, it's time to giddy up. It's time to get a real primary going. It's time to run James Langford out of GOP politics so every other flat in the front senator like him looks on in horror as his career goes down the tubes and worries for themselves. It is time to come for James Langford. Senator, now it's on. Well, he may be a useless idiot, but he has wonderful tastes in television. Here's the senator today. In fact, I had a popular commentator four weeks ago that I talked to that told me flat out before they knew any of the contents of the bill, any of the content, none, nothing was out at that point, that told me flat out, if you try to move a bill that solves the border crisis during this presidential year, I will do whatever I can to destroy you. You have wonderful taste, Senator. All that may have made you uncomfortable, but I'm right. And it wasn't four weeks ago. Quit telling lies.